As patron of the Sustainable Food Trust, I'm delighted to be able to contribute to this countdown to COP26 virtual TEDx event and to add my support alongside a, a growing number of food businesses, NGOs, banks, investors and others to their work in developing what has the potential to become an internationally harmonised framework for measuring farm sustainability. Mindful uh, that this COP is being hosted by the United Kingdom in Glasgow, I can only say how strongly I hope it might come to be seen as a landmark event similar to the impact of COP21 in Paris back in 2016. A turning point where world leaders came together and recognised the transformative potential of our agriculture, forestry and food systems. I say this because uh, although the world's farms are currently a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions and biodiversity loss, since agriculture has occupied an ever greater proportion of all habitable land area, if those same farms converted to regenerative and sustainable production methods, they could have the potential to become a key part of the solution. By doing so, they could help ensure the planet remains habitable for future generations. The belief that this could be possible was one of the major drivers which led me to launch my Sustainable Markets Initiative at Davos in 2020, and more recently, the Terra Carta project at the beginning of 2021. Both were based on my conviction that only by harnessing the power of the market to help move towards net zero and reinstate the lost biodiversity will we be able to avert a catastrophic ecological breakdown of our planetary support systems. In the field of agriculture and food, of course, the challenge is to do this whilst at the same time producing enough nutrient-dense food to feed the entire global population. I'm convinced from my own practical experience with organic and regenerative farming, which now spans over 35 years, that this could be achievable, especially if at the same time we tackle seriously the perverse situation whereby in both the developed and developing worlds, some 40% of food is wasted annually. However, the key to all this lies in measurement. It should go without saying that you cannot manage what you do not measure. But until now, we have not established a harmonized global framework for measuring agricultural sustainability from the farm up. This is why, right from the beginning, I am so delighted to have been a supporter of this important initiative led by the Sustainable Food Trust as a participant in farm trials on my farm at Highgrove in Gloucestershire, on the Sandringham Estate in Norfolk, and at my foundation's headquarters at Dumfries House in Scotland. The development of a common global language for measuring farm sustainability, as we already have for accounting protocols, will be absolutely crucial if we are to mark our progress beyond COP26 in the countdown towards net zero, or as close to this as we can get in relation to our food production systems. Uh, this is why my Sustainable Markets Initiative has set up expert and practitioner-led roundtable discussion, and uh, specifically a task force on land use, agriculture and food, which will be adopting this framework as a means of benchmarking agricultural sustainability and crucially exploring the whole issue of accounting properly for the real and often hidden environmental costs of industrialised agriculture through the polluter pays principle. Now I have long believed um, that in so many ways the private sector holds the key to help deliver the change and the solutions we need. To achieve this with agriculture, we also need a food labelling system which empowers citizens in their role as consumers 
to have the information they need to make informed decisions about purchasing food products, whose supply chain genuinely reduces emissions and other forms of pollution, uh, protects biodiversity and improves public health. All this could be possible once we have a harmonised means of measuring farm sustainability at international level. Perhaps at long last we are beginning to wake up to the reality that what we do to nature we in fact do to ourselves. Of course we cannot escape the effect of our impacts on the planet because we are part of that system, a part of nature, not apart from her. So measurement of the impacts of land use, including forestry and agriculture, and connecting them to government policy incentives, the investment community and uh, certification from sustainability audits through to food labelling systems could be transformative. With this um, framework of measurement in place, we might finally have the potential to enable a global renaissance of truly sustainable agriculture and food production. I could only say I very much hope this happens, not just because it would be a wonderful legacy for the COP26 event, but also because we have an absolute responsibility to the next generation to enable a shift towards methods of food production which are working in harmony with nature.